I think about the function of art a lot, like what it does, what's the purpose. And it has a purpose, you know. I believe that you can model something beyond what you what you have in front of you. You know, you have like this stuff that's just in a gallery and it's just, or wherever it is and you're seeing it, but it can affect the larger world or how you view the world or it can change your experience of life. So, just hit it with hairspray. And that will burn off in the kiln. But it's just a way that, it's not the way you're supposed to do it. I just like using hairspray. So I balance it on here. I am very detail oriented. I pay a lot of attention to small things like hardware and all of these small things that make up a whole piece because I, I think it's equally important because it shows intense consideration for the thing that you're doing. It seems like a sign of respect to the viewer, like I care about this. If I'm gonna ask you to care about this, I better care about this, <laughs> you know. Drawing actually was kind of like a magic power as a kid. It just seemed natural to me to sort of do something creative. Sometimes these get stuck and then you have to like I don't really do that much drawing anymore. I think what I liked about drawing was more the observation. And I think that love of observation brought about this love of material, just noticing the qualities of things. We lived for a long time, my family, in a village that was meant to it was people's summer cabins, like small houses, and we lived there all year. <laughs> so we kind of had this seasonal influx, and then we moved later on to a farm. So I spent a lot of time either with my brother or alone in the woods and or just doing whatever I wanted. If I wasn't in school or, you know, pl other planned things, I was usually just doing, I had a lot of freedom, yeah. And I would do things like comb through all like a, a huge lot of gravel to find a fossil and I would find one. I am fascinated with the real world more than the depiction of it. And then the in-between that sculpture can be like, uh, that it exists materially in front of us usually. Materials to me are like, it's everything sort of in the world, <laughs> it's sort of like all matter is like a material um, and all matter can be transformed. So, it, you know, within those considerations, that's kind of where my interest in material lies. Like how can you get something to read a certain way? So it's material um, and then form, of course, those are different things. So there's raw material and then the form it takes and how it's manipulated. And I, I think both of those things have their own meaning. So for example, like unformed lead means something, you know, lead itself has a meaning and then the form that you, the lead takes as a associations or whatever. Recently, I've been asking myself, why am I drawn to materials and objects from different industries like the military or medicine or religion? The short answer is their systems of power. Um, 
and and their systems in in that their systems that humans use to create meaning um, and art is one of those systems of power. Sometimes it's hard to see how how it is because it seems like such a maybe a softer form of power, but it has what it has influence and psychology and all of those forces behind it. And one of the first things to go in a you know in a society that is losing where people are losing their power is uh, it free is expression in art. Um, it's hard to explain because it's not as like, there's no like inherent danger or violence that's gonna happen from art or like there might be with like political system or war or something. But um, so in that way, it's, um, it seems benign, but I think that's also part of its power is that it can infiltrate, you know, and it can change people's minds. Sometimes feels like sculpture is on stage when it's in a gallery, like a performer or something, and when it's in, tucked away in a studio or somewhere else, storage or something, it's not on. Like it still is the same object, but it's not affecting the space the same way. I mean, everyone knows there's a difference between a painting of a human skull and a real human skull. I mean, it's like the aura of the thing. One thing I'm, that has drawn me more towards sculpture, I think is, it's not all my eye. It's not all of my, there, these are all my decisions in my work and things, everything I've done is, it's mine, but I also can use found things. I can, I can talk with other, languages, I can collage more um, with, that, with that aura of something, especially something used that has come from another industry or realm. It brings all that history and baggage and it makes it kind of difficult to use and it's not a raw material anymore. As an artist, I feel like, of course I'm interested in meaning, you know. <laughs> So it's, it's kind of taking these meanings that already exist and repurposing that, not only repurposing the object as like a reuse, reusing an object, but repurposing the purpose. And I think that showing that you can recontextualize power or structures of power is sort of a way to maybe hint at taking power or changing that dynamic. Yeah, just showing a different way that these things can be. I'm not lacking motivation to make things. I'm not motivated by an audience, but I think that since I'm so interested in how meaning is created and meaning is created um, in a context of the world, you know, so I can think whatever I want about my work and my studio and do all of that just to, to please myself. This might sound kind of weird, but I, th I feel like it kind of needs to be seen to be finished by someone else. Like even if, if it's a small audience or big, I, it doesn't, it's sort of like to feel complete to me, it's like someone else needs to, to see it. So I don't have a very specific goal for what I want someone to think. Most of all, I think I want to show that or offer my way of thinking for someone else's consideration, not to adopt, but just a message has been sent or, and some communication may have happened. I, I've certainly had that experience with art, you know, where it's changed my point of view.
It might be the biggest form of power. <laughs> <laughs>